Today down in the comments, I want to hear about a slasher film that you love that you feel like not enough people talk about. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. I am a horror author who, for whatever reason, has a YouTube channel, and I like talking about new release or reissue horror movies and then pairing them uh, with a book or a piece of horror fiction that you will enjoy if you like those movies. If you like this video and you want to see more stuff like it, uh, make sure to check out the rest of my, the videos on my channel uh, and then subscribe so you don't miss any more uh, and like this video and comment and, and, and go follow me everywhere. Because as these films prove, uh, you know, everyone needs stalkers. Today we're going to be talking about two brand new releases from Arrow Video, uh, recently to Blu-ray. These are films from the director Jose Larraz, and if you've been watching the channel, uh, you'll remember that back in April, I reviewed Arrow Video's box set, uh, Blood Hunger, which is um, three earlier films from the director Jose Larraz. Uh, I'm not going to really recap this, uh, but know that I love it, know that it's a great set. Uh, I'll put the video there or there. I don't know where to point, but I'll put a, a link up to the video. And uh, if you're at all interested in the, this director, I highly recommend picking this up. It's not out of print, it's still, still around. These are two movies um, from Larraz's later years. In that video, we kind of touched on the fact that Jose Larraz uh, is a Spanish filmmaker, Spanish-born filmmaker, um, who uh, was working, or, or started working at the time that uh, Francisco Franco was in power, uh, and kind of went to Britain uh, to make his first films, made them there so they have this kind of very um, hybrid UK-Spain feel to them. And then later in his career, a lot of his later films, the producers and the co-producers, uh, ended up being British, ended up being kind of international. Uh, and that continues with this three kind of loose trilogy of films he made later in his life, uh, starting with Rest in Pieces, which is, uh, Arrow has not released, which I, I don't even think has ever had a DVD. I think has only had a VHS. Um, but then he made Edge of the Axe, and then he made Deadly Manor. Uh, and the interesting thing about both of these is they are both American set slashers. Um, Edge of the Axe, very little filming uh, takes place in America. Uh, Deadly Matter, all of it is filmed in upstate New York. But like the earlier films in the uh, early to mid 70s that he that he made that we talked about uh, that had a very UK feel, these end up having uh, a very 80s American feel because uh, Edge of the Axe was made mid 19 maybe 19 late 1987 released in 88 uh, and Deadly Manor was 1989. So this is kind of the tail end of the slasher boom, and this is these are two films by someone who doesn't have particular reverence for slasher tropes and slasher conventions and what a slasher movie is. Um, this is, these, this is a, a Euro director coming in halfway to do a job uh, and coming in halfway to make his own movies, uh, and they're very, very interesting. But that's the general overview of both these films, but let's talk about them in depth. Edge of the Axe uh, just generally uh, seems like the better regarded of these two films, mainly probably because it is definitely the gorier of the two films. The plot kind of centers around uh, this guy living in Northern California. He's kind of a computer geek. He's hanging out with his friend. They're, do they're doing like pest control for a bar. They discover a body that has been slasher killed and they're mixed up in this, in this psychodrama going on where a keep cutting away to these almost unrelated kill scenes where someone with an ax is um, hacking up young women. It feels like a, a kind of mix between a, 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 like a whodunit slasher and maybe a, a psycho, but it also has that, that late 80s um, kind of computer aesthetic because we have this kid that's a, that's a computer geek and he, he has this rudimentary internet and this rudimentary uh, um, chat room kind of thing going on where he, 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 he finds this girl he likes and he gives her one of his old computers and so they can talk back and forth and there's kind of like a um, almost like an early techno thriller element to this, but it's a hodgepodge. This is this is a movie that is a lot of different things going on at once, and while it never quite coalesces into something cohesive, uh, there are some real standout moments and some really incredible sequences. Uh, one towards uh, the the middle slash end of the film, uh, it's even on the cover, the slasher in a in a house. Um, this just extended sequence with this with this one character and she's contending with the slasher and it's really really incredible uh, one of the better one of the creepier slasher home invasion um, Scenes I can think of it's got a lot of charm uh, similar to a, a film like pieces uh, a film where an international crew is kind of aping 
uh, American aesthetics with some American actors, with uh, the, the idea that we can make this look close enough. There's still a lot to love here. The slasher looks really cool. Uh, some of the red herrings are just straight up ridiculous and bizarre and almost uh, surreal in a way. It's got almost a, because it has uh, kind of, even though it's not really a Pacific Northwest setting, it has almost like a Twin Peaks vibe to some of the weirdness. Um, and the movie's at its best when it has these like weird little smaller moments. Broadly, uh, n not great and doesn't really function uh, like a slasher. Uh, it, it's, it definitely has like, it's a movie that's seen other slashers and is like, okay, well, there's got to be red herrings and there's got to be reversals and there's got to be all this. And it just, the way that it paces those out and the way that it, uh, that it delivers those pieces of information are just completely bizarre. And, and as I said, pretty charming in a, in a, in a, in a weird way of like, this isn't Americana, but it kind of feels like it. Great looking movie. Um, and the disc looks incredible. Uh, it's, it's, it, the movie looks like it was made yesterday and Arrow do, always does an incredible job with it. As far as special features, these liner notes by Amanda Reyes, uh, American Horrors by Way of Spain, International Co-Productions, and the Spanish Slasher. I thought this was a really good read. So if you get this disc, uh, don't skimp on the booklet. Make sure you open it up and read it. But read it after, because it's definitely uh, full of spoilers. Next, we have Deadly Manor, which, uh, again, not a, doesn't seem, at least online, at least in the, the general community that I've surveyed, doesn't seem as well regarded as... Uh, edge of the axe but a movie I actually uh, prefer it does lack the kind of set pieces and uh, murder scenes that are in the other one but what it while it lacks those it has this great ambiance again it was this one's really shot in America this one's shot in upstate New York uh, like an hour or so outside of uh, Manhattan they, they they film in this dilapidated house because of that it has like really cool authentic production value. I can think this was just a regular old house that they filmed in. They used the furniture. They didn't set dress it. It has a much more traditional slasher setup where we have a group of kids uh, plus one because they, they pick up a hitchhiker who is a super nefarious looking hitchhiker. Uh, they can't find uh, the lake house that they were going to go to so they just decide uh, to stay at this, uh, this, this old manor house that they come across. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, it's a deadly manor. They go there, they, they start setting up to, to sleep there. They notice outside that there is a, a crashed car on like a basically like a, a pedestal. Like this is like some kind of shrine to someone who died in this car. Uh, in the basement, there are two caskets, almost like um, upstate New York, Dracula style. Uh, it has this great gothic feel, this great uh, old dark house feel, even though it is a slasher. Uh, those elements are really pushed to the forefront where it's like, oh no, this is almost Laraz making like a, a haunted house movie. There's, there's this, this great kind of Chekhov's gun of like a, of a piece of uh, drywall that's just crumbling, that's, that's, that's recently been put up, that doesn't have any pictures hung on it. It's, it. it's crumbling as the kids are staying there and we were like, I wonder what's behind that wall. And then when you finally find out what's behind the wall, it's pretty good. It's pretty satisfying. The, they kind of give away... Uh, what the slasher looks like on the cover, even though you don't see her for a good amount of the movie. Um, it's a pretty cool looking slasher. She's just got this regular old uh, Michael Myers face, but clearly there's something up with her eye. Uh, and you, it, it all hooks into the backstory of the house. As I said, a much more traditional slasher setup, but then the execution is still has that weird digressions and, and, and things that, don't, that you definitely wouldn't see um, in most... Um, in most of the like kind of standard slasher films, uh, the, the final girl formula in both these films, there is there kind of is no such thing. Lorez throws it out. It wouldn't if you've seen his earlier films, if you've seen Vampires, or if you've seen Whirlpool, um, you know he's got like w a lot of weird gender stuff going on uh, in his films, and, and and the final girl format doesn't fit him at all. Uh, and it's it's interesting to watch the director just like, all right, well I'm gonna take this from this genre, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take this. And, and I'm going to disregard all the other stuff. Uh, and it, it's, it's a heck of a movie. I really found myself very, very charmed by it. I know there's going to be people down in the comments screaming like, what is wrong with you? Edge of the Axe is so much better. But they, I, I like them both. Uh, they're both really enjoyable. But something about Deadly Matter and the general tone of it and how it looked uh, and how it felt, uh, I, liked, uh, I liked a good bit more. And it feels more like a Laraz movie because as we talked about in that video back in April, these are... Uh, Generally, his movies are pretty sleazy. They're they're kind of 
um, soft erotica, some of them, uh, and Deadly Matter it leans a lot more into that and and feels uh, a lot uh, a lot more late night cable. Nineteen eighty nine feels like the, the right time for it. Uh, so again, these movies aren't going to be for everyone. If you if you hear me say that and you're like, I don't want to watch that, not going to be for you. Uh, but if you if you are especially if you are a slasher film completist, um, yes get these. If you like slasher films, if you've never heard of them, if you haven't seen them since you, you, you rented them on VHS, this one with a really misleading cover uh, back in the day, uh, know that they really hold up and these, uh, these transfers make it look like you're watching new movies. As far as the features on uh, Deadly Manor, the best one is a, a really long form interview with our slasher here, uh, played by Jennifer Deloria. Uh, she's not in a whole lot of the movie and she kind of talks about that in the interview, but she's got a lot of really funny, uh, really kind of sweet uh, remembrances of uh, the Raz, especially because there's not a ton of interview footage of him. There's like three minutes in here that was um, also on one of the Mondo Bacabra discs. So was, I think it was taken from a longer interview on symptoms. But if you're a Laraz completist, uh, if you want to see these weirdo uh, Spanish auteur slasher films, uh, I highly recommend picking them up. If you are not a devotee of the genre, if you do not enjoy that kind of thing, probably still steer clear, probably not for you. This week's book recommendation is She Said Destroy by Nadia Bulkin. Uh, now this is my current read. I'm working my way through this. It's a short story collection. I've been recommending quite a few or more than I used to uh, single author short story collections uh, just because I I'm, I'm really enjoying them. They're, they're kind of making perfect before bed reading uh, and one author kind of leads to another one, leads to another one. Um, like uh, Nathan Bongrud's uh, Wounds, which I I don't even remember, like a couple months back I, I talked about, uh, She Said Destroy is, is very much a um, multi-genre collection or, or they're cross-genre stories. Uh, we've got kind of ghost stories, you've got kind of sci-fi stories, kind of this, 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 this slipstream. Um, but I think you, you, you read a couple of them and you, there's no denying that they're dark stories or that they're, they fit um, discussion when we talk about horror fiction. Very, very beautiful prose. Um, I've been reading so much kind of trash pulp fiction that it's, it's a nice change of pace to read something that's, that's, that's well constructed and well constructed and, and nicely written. But uh, I think it's great um, and definitely check it out. As far as personal announcements and stuff like that, I've currently got uh, the Dark Crystal Age Resistance, if you've watched the Netflix show, um, if you know the Jim Henson movie, uh, the Jim Henson, Frank Oz, uh, Brian Froud movie, uh, The Dark Crystal, uh, you will love Dark Crystal Age Resistance number five. I've written a four-issue arc on this comic book. It's at com it's this issue's on stands right now at your local comic book store right now, um, and you, you can ask them to pick up the rest of the series um, because this is a standalone story. It's based on uh, work by uh, Jeffrey Addis and Will Matthews, uh, who are the uh, showrunners of the Netflix show. So it definitely connects. It is a, a prequel story to that show. It is a prequel story uh, for the podling Hup. If you've seen the show, you know Hup is far and away the best character. Uh, it's basically a Dark Crystal uh, paper moon because Hup meets a uh, guy who may or may not be a con artist and they kind of go on a road trip adventure. Uh, I'm, I really, really enjoyed writing this, really, really proud of this, and if you at all like comics, if you at all go to a comic book store, please pick this up, pick up the whole series. Uh, there will be a trade paperback, uh, but that's in months and months and months, and I will talk to you about that then. Also, if you've uh, ignored the pleas in my other videos, um, Clown in the Cornfield, still uh, a few months away from release as I'm talking about it on this video, uh, but pre-order it now, it's gonna be a beautiful hardcover. Uh, if you like slashers, which if you watch this far into this video, I know you do. Um, it's, it's, it's my uh, YA uh, teen slasher, but uh, we don't skimp on the gore. And Mr. Clive Barker enjoyed it and said nice things about it. If you want to find out more about anything we talked about today or my books, I've got links down below. Like, subscribe, and uh, see you next week where we'll talk about uh, some more, uh, more recent horror stuff.